I, I, I don't know what the answer is yet, but we'll get there. So they might have been fine. Why is now we're going to take a photograph of that. So, that's fun to watch. You yeah, owe them a lot, so I'm going to show up with some donuts tomorrow. Just say thanks. Episode five. My name's Ben, I work at CNC Labs and I am working on the Altmill 4x8 project to make a large format router table which will cut a four foot by eight foot sheet of material. We'll be wearing down a bunch of racks, pinions, when they fail, how they fail, what ways we can mitigate the wear and reduce it. So let's get to it. Digital readout, this is the little magnetic side that picks up on this magnetic strip and tells you just how far along you are on it. I'm trying to attach this right now to the Y gantry plate. Hey, he's making. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You find linear magnetic tape? I have a piece of magnetic tape. Then I cut it. I've got a short one. Utilize this little angled thing. That'll allow me to take it off put it on to a different part of the machine. Okay. Jeez! So we're at zero, point three away from zero, and that is at the location of 2030. We'll go back now we're gonna go back to 12.30. Go. Wow, look at that. So this is in millimeters. It was at 03.02 of a millimeter away from where this zero was. Going all the way back to the end of the machine and moving forward. The machine moved in the range of 17 kilometers 26 hours of, of moving back and forth. The pinions are worn down. This is kind of like the worst form of setup. We ran this no lubrication. I'm going to see how much it wore the rack out compared to how much it wore the pinion out. You can see that lip there. <laughs> We're stuffing this pinion into the rack with a compression spring so as to uh, allow for vertical imperfections in machining and uh, fitment along with reducing backlash to near zero. So when the pinion tooth is exiting one of the rack teeth and moving into the next, I can change this angle here. That le helps me track when the teeth are coming into engagement. But what I want to make sure is that there's some relief here. While we stuff this pinion into the rack with our compression spring, this sharp part of the rack doesn't cut into the pinion prematurely wearing the pinion, which then changes the profile, which then has the pinion kind of end up being stuffed further into the rack. So that's my idea, is to have these chamfers onto the tops of the teeth. Okay, so this is what the teeth were looking like. And then I took away the edges with a file. Not the most scientific way of going about it. Oh, that is nice. Pretty deadly because I just used a file against them. But the concept is proving to be at least reasonable. Doing about eight things at the current moment. Machining opinion. Testing the hardness of a whole bunch of racks and pinions. Rockwell B, which is super soft, uh, organizing what racks. Oh, no way. Testing what, well, figuring out what racks I'm going to bring to this uh, nitriding place that's near us uh, in the next town over. I've got to take the black oxide coating off because I'm bringing it to a nitriding place. When you put it in this stuff called rust off, it ends up taking the black so oxide off. Wow, that really did work. It's phosphoric acid actually that does it. Just takes the coating right off.
So this is the one that's done. I've got some rack sections. This is the process of nitriding. Wow! Look at the thing that's dancing on top of it. What is that? It looks like there's like a... Yes, it, it does that sometimes. I, it's I, like electrical dancing. I've seen it do that. Yeah. The reason behind it. Wow. We want the pinion to wear out and the rack to stay fine. And then that way people buy a new pinion and put that on and don't need to buy a new rack. Yeah. Both parts, think, same I hardness. Just pinion and and pinion, same material. pinion would still wear down first if both parts are same hardness? Yeah, same material and same hardness. Okay. So that was nitriding, ion, plasma, nitriding. Basically you have table that's charged, you put the part on the table, then you have the cylinder opposite charge of the table. Heats up the part through the electrical current amperage going through. It looks pretty cool, it goes all like sort of purple like you're in space. Then you put the gas in, the nitrogen gas or the ammonia, ammonia has nitrogen in it, goes onto the surface of the part, hangs around, sticks around near it and just inserts itself in. Where to test two on its way. Obviously it wore right down, which is completely expected and a a good thing, really, because what it is, is it's a building block. I now have a baseline of a failed rack and pinion setup, which is just two non-hardened uh, 1045 material racks and pinions purchased from stock, the internet. Got these new nitrided racks in from a local place that nitrides things. This is a nitrided rack. In there is a nitrided pinion. Other side, this side is regular stock. 20 Rockwell hardness and nitrided pinion. So the bet is that pinion stays good, wears rack down because it's so much harder, or at least sees far less wear, and the rack is the one to suffer more than the pinion. Whereas right now, normally we see the pinion suffer far more than the rack because the pinion is just doing so many more reps. That pinion's turning and turning for one length, whereas you know one length the rack sees per tooth, it sees one hit. It's gonna run over the weekend until it fails. Yeah, it's looking good. Like it's, it's, you know, it's wearing, but it's looking good. Healthy dose of grease. Woo! So I've got a whole bunch of this style of rack. I'm gonna drill a bunch of holes, matches this whole pattern to put onto the V0 prototype. So this is exactly now going to be the whole distance that I want, 100 millimeters. So we didn't get any two slippage. It only goes to about 20 thou past, ze past zero. To hop teeth, pinion needs to go zero. A full rotation, which is 100 thou, which is two point something millimeters. 20 thou down, then the, the motor stalled, which is kind of the preferred method of failure compared to this hopping teeth. If we want the motor to stall, if you're cutting something that's too much for uh, the system. It's not lubricated. I'm sure if it was lubricated, maybe it would go easy. Okay, so I'll lubricate it. 
25. With lubrication on the rack, grease in this case, it slips at pinion compressed into rack at 25 pounds. At 30, it won't slip, so it's somewhere within there. I'm gonna run the next test, 30 pounds compression force in. Oh, no, no. Oh no, you gotta time it a little better. <laughs> oh! Oh no, we're good. What's it called in science class when they're like, so where did the error so where did the error arrive? <laughs> Well, another two tests running today. This wear test, I'm gonna stop it today. It's reached 100 kilometers, which is really uh, a pretty solid milestone. That side is in really quite good shape. This side's not doing bad, especially at 100 kilometers. Okay, that does it. That is, uh, a wrap on these videos. Episode five finished, wear tests finished. If you can still hear, it's actually ongoing. It's one going on currently in the background. Uh, there's a lot of engineering work which is ramping up and the overall series did a good job of showing the prototyping process. And at this point, there's a lot of detailed work, getting drawings made, uh, purchasing different items, that is a lot less exciting to show the camera. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really appreciate everybody watching. Uh, so until next time, thank you very much.